The Open Wheel Race Series is the latest addition to Grand Theft Auto Online. This guide is meant to help you to get going or improve your results in those races. Hello, my name is Sauerkraut and now let's get to it. We will be talking about certain terms regarding racing which even apply to real life. If you watched racing TV before, you probably know those words, but for beginners, here are the explanations. You can forward to this point in the video to get to the guide itself. Rip and tire wear, traction. This is where the rubber meets the road. When the tires wear out, the surface of the tire wears down and breaks up and can't adhere to the asphalt anymore. This is also described as loss of traction. Wheel spin will lead to faster tire wear. You have less grip on tracks when they are wet. Curb. Curbs are those red and white striped corner markers on racetracks. They are slightly angled and can unsettle the car when driving over them but you're still part of the racetrack. Guardrails, barriers. Guardrails mark the sturdy and unforgiving limits of the racetrack and should not be used to slow down your vehicle. Don't crash into them, contact will damage your car. Spoiler, wing, downforce. The front spoiler and the rear wing are aerodynamic devices to direct the airflow over and under the vehicle to generate downforce, which means with higher speed the car gets pressed harder to the ground and therefore can turn tighter and faster. Slipstream drafting. Air is a liquid. The car driving in front of you is pushing the air to the side and around the car, which creates a tunnel in the air where you can slip into and gain speed and it will make you catch up very, very quickly. In GTA Online races this can be seen and heard by the white lines coming from the car in front of you which makes whooshy noises. Or behind you if you've been followed too closely. This is used to overtake vehicles in the straights. Don't get too close into the slipstream corners though because this will make your car understeer. And talking about that... Understeer, oversteer. When you see the tree you're going to hit, that's called understeer. If you can hear it, you have oversteer. Well, the road. Understeer means when you turn the wheels to one direction, but the car pushes over the front tires farther to the outside of the corner. This happens, for example, when you lost your front spot, and it can only be remedied by taking the corner much slower. Oversteer occurs when you turn into a corner and the rear wheels don't have enough grip and push to the outside of the corner. With enough practice, you can counter steer and catch the car before it spins out, which you want to avoid. The easiest way is again to slow down for the corner. Driving neutral is the way to go. Avoid over or under steer, so you don't wear your tires out prematurely. Pit stop box. This is where your crew gives you new tires and fix any damage of your vehicle. Usually the pits are located at the same straight as the start finish line with one exception, which is at the urban renewal track, where the pit stop is after the first corner. Use when your car is damaged or your tires are worn. Drive in, come to a full stop when prompted. As soon as you see the transition smoke, hit the throttle. An automatic speed limit is applied in the pit stop lane. Do it yourself. Especially in the beginning, you might want to start your own race first. You can do this even as a level 1 character on GTA Online. If you want to play by yourself without distractions, go to your settings, online, matchmaking and select closed. In the same menu, go to jobs, rockstar created, races and then select one of the currently six open wheel races and you can play by yourself to train. But if you want to play with other people, you might want to change the race type from standard to non-contact, especially in the beginning, since you don't want to be crashed out by other players, but you are here to learn the tracks. Also, with other players in the lobby, you should turn off custom vehicles, which is on by default. So higher ranked drivers won't have too big of an advantage. Vehicle selection. For open wheel races, you have two options only, the PR4 and the R88. Since the traction of the PR4 is superior, you should always select this one. At the selection screen, pick always soft tires, since they give you the best grip in the corners. The soft tires do wear out more quickly, usually they last between 5 and 6 laps if you're not too rough on the rubbers, 
But since pit stops barely cost any time, it's definitely worth it. Go on go, start in first corner. To get the boost start, hit the throttle just when the go appears after the countdown. But sometimes you just might want to hold back. If you ever joined a race in Grand Theft Auto Online before, you might have noticed that almost always there will be carnage in the first corner. Since you don't want to get your car damaged by other players, you might want to hold back and observe. Anticipating the reactions of other drivers is crucial in any race. See where other cars crash and try to avoid the spinning cars and debris, take the corner slower than usual and take advantage of other drivers taking themselves out. If you start in the first row, or fairly close to it, take the boost speed and try to go around cars in front of you and run for it. You might get unlucky because cars behind you will get the slipstream, but usually it's your best bet to get ahead of the pack. Break into the corner a bit later than usual, so cars behind you can't easily crash into you. Taking corners. Everybody can drive in a straight line fast, so taking corners well is the way to win. To take tighter corners best, take the slow in, fast out approach. This means release the throttle early or even brake a little. Position your car to the outside of the corner and point the nose of the car towards the apex of the corner and over the curbs, which is the center point of the curve. Accelerate as soon as you can release the steering again, so you won't spin out. Hairpins, those are the 180 degree corners, have to be taken very slowly. Brake hard and point to take the corner tight. Most people prefer to crash into a barrier instead of braking, but you are no smarter. Some corners aren't corners at all. The six Rockstar Race tracks have a lot of corners which can be taken full speed. Just turn in early, go wide on the inside of the corner and wide to the outside of the corner again. Try to cut corners by taking them with as little of steering input as possible. Some corners can even be almost completely left out as long as you hit the checkpoints. Boost away! Both open wheel race cars come with a kinetic energy recovery system, or CURSE. After the second lap starts, you will see the notification Boost enabled. The boost bar is filled, and by clicking the left thumbstick, if you use a game controller, or by pressing the F key on your keyboard, a temporary speed boost will be applied. You regain boost by braking or releasing your throttle on any lap after the second lap has begun. The boost will be disabled when you release the throttle or hit the thumbstick or F key again. Be careful not to use the boost in corners, you will spin out and run wide and leave the track. Take advantage of a boost when overtaking other players out of a slipstream, so they don't get the slipstream themselves to pass you back immediately. You have to learn to be strategic with your speed boost. For example, if you notice on the map that you catch up to another car, keep your boost stored up until you are able to pass the vehicle in front of you. If you drive without any cars around you, you should see when to use the boost most efficiently. Accelerating out of slow corners, on uphill sections or in straights is usually most effective. But try out what suits you best. Braking, not braking. This sounds very obvious, but when you see other players driving, it doesn't seem to be. Your car has brakes, use them. Since in open wheel races your car gets damaged, try to avoid any contact, especially with barriers or other players. If you can't avoid a crash, try to get hit on the side or with the tires instead of front or rear of the vehicle. When you ran a little wide in a corner, lift the throttle just a bit, you will take the corner tighter without crashing. If you took a turn too wide to make it, try to tap the e-brake to rotate the car tighter by flinging out the rear. Don't do that too often though, since it wears out the rear tires prematurely. Pit stop. On the bottom right of your screen you can see two bars with your car's health. The top one is for body damage, the lower for tire wear. If you still have the front and rear spoiler and you're just missing the center body panels, don't worry, you don't need to go to the pit. If your tire wear is at about one third, you should go to the pit lane. Stop and wait until the car is fully repaired and the tires are replaced. In case you've lost front or rear wing, you will lose a lot of downforce and have to pit your car. You will lose a lot of time because you have to go very slowly through corners due to understeer or oversteer. Don't worry too much about going to the pits and losing time, it's almost natural though. 
Since your car will receive full boost in a pit stop, you can make up almost the full time without any issues. When you miss the tire wear and the bar turns red, be extremely careful. Don't spin the tires up and take corners slower. Hopefully you can make it back to the pits without blowing out the tires. Since soft tires last about 5 to 6 laps, plan your strategy. If the car behind you is about 6 seconds back, you can make a pit stop without being overtaken or in any danger to have a car behind you in your slipstream. Mind Reader When you're not alone in the race, you will sadly have to cope with other drivers. You have to learn how to judge the behavior of those players. Watch them taking corners. When do they brake? When do they accelerate? Are they hitting other cars when they are about to get past? Aggressive drivers are the worst to handle. You will have to be sneaky and pass them when they don't anticipate it. Pick your spot in advance. Keep some good old boost stored and overtake them without contact. To trick them, make it look like you try to pass them on one side and pick the other side in the last moment. If they go wide in the corner, take the inside line. Most players will be trying to take faster drives out by crashing them. So take your time and wait for your moment. Watch the map. When you're by yourself on a straight, check the map and distance to other drivers. You can do this by pushing the pad down arrow to see the lap times. This is also a good opportunity to check on tire wear. Analog and smooth. Your best option to succeed is by driving smooth. Don't let the tires spin on acceleration, you will wear the tires down. Drive as smooth as possible. To help you with that, you should consider playing with a controller if you're playing on PC. I'm using an old wired Xbox 360 controller, which you can get cheaper on eBay or Amazon. But if you have a PC with Bluetooth, you might as well pair it with an Xbox One or PS4 controller to get the optimum control out of your vehicle. Half throttle out of tight hairpins will avoid excessive tire wear and you will be able to steer way more precise. Custom cars and what tracks to choose. If you can afford it and you leveled up to get yourself a custom PR4, go ahead. But your best option is to wait until you can upgrade it fully since it will save you a lot of money. The time difference varies greatly with the tracks, it can be as little as 3 seconds to up to 7 seconds per lap. The easiest track to learn master is lap it up. It has a lot of full speed corners and lots of straightaways. One track to avoid without non-contact enabled is Brace for Impact, especially with a nearly full or full lobby. That track is very short and full of slow and tight corners which obviously to pile ups and destroy cars. Ask the host of the race if they could enable non-contact, if other players complain, those are the people to be wary of. In my experience that kind of player is one of which can only succeed by taking other players out and if they end up in the back, they turn around, drive the wrong way and take out all other drivers. Keep an eye out on those kind of people. Find yourself a group of people you're comfortable to race with and you can learn from. This is the most fun. Practice. The last and most logical step is of course to learn the tracks and practice. If you're all the way in the back, you can try to take a corner with more risk just to test if there might be a quicker way through it. No track time is wasted time. So never leave a race, even if the situation might seem hopeless, to get a good finish. GTA Online rewards RP with personal best times, clean laps and attendance in races. If you leave a race prematurely, you will be counted as a loss and even given your bad sport mark on GTA Online, pull through it. Also it's much easier and quicker to make in-game money in races than to spend millions on highs to get just a little payout. Another tip to improve, record your driving sessions. Learn from your mistakes and avoid them next time. Watch for other players' driving style and see if they take a different, more efficient line and copy them. Better be safe than sorry. Take it a bit slower rather than risking a crash. You can usually count on other drivers taking themselves out. So most likely you will gain places without any effort on your part. Congratulations, you made it to the end. So I can't think of anything else right now, this video is already much longer than anticipated. You now know the theory on how to win races, without cheating that is. If you have more tips, leave them down in the comments, if my tips help you, let me know as well. If you hated everything I've said and or my weird accent, hit the download button. If you want to see breakdowns in each track, let me know and I'll see what I can do. Stay safe.
Sauerkraut out.